This week, I want to try something a little bit different. I want to try etching. As you can see, I already have the tool that I was making complete this week. So I want to try to etch my touch mark right here out on the end. Now, I already have this clean. I cl degreased it so there's no grease on it. And I'm just going to start at the beginning. This is the cheapest way that I can do an etching because I don't do them all the time or have I ever. So first order of business is I have water. And I know that the solution has got to be very salty in order to do this. So I'm just going to start by putting a bunch of salt in here and shake this up and go until pretty much can't fit no more salt in it. And that will give me my solution to work with. My salt water solution is mixed up. There's a little bit of sediment down at the bottom because it won't mix anymore. I added more salt to it from what you've seen in the first clip. And hopefully that is enough. I'm sure it is. Now I'm going to tape over the end of this so I can make my mark out here on this flat spot that I made. Now I'm going to attempt to do my touch mark freehand. Okay, I have this cut out. I did pretty decent for doing it by hand. Now, I don't know that I would use electrical tape for this again. It was pretty tough to get those pieces out of there. I know that in YouTube land, that was probably just a few seconds in between the last clip, but I was here quite a long time. I used a razor blade to cut through that. Probably wouldn't advise that either. It's a little hard on your fingers, but it's sharp enough to, to do some precise work for that. Now I'm ready to etch this. Okay, for this I'm using a nine volt battery. And I think that 12 volts would probably be a little bit more efficient, but the only 12 volt that I have is car batteries, and that's probably a little bit more dangerous. I don't know that I would advise that. But for this, I have some gator clips also. And we'll just hook one to positive one to negative make sure they don't touch either now the other side I'm going to ground out and I'm going to grab one of these as close to the bottom as I can then that will be what I actually dab on here to try to etch this so I believe I'm ready I need to put some safety glasses on though That is not promising. I don't hear anything. Oh, I didn't get it wet enough. There we go. You can kind of see it bubbling and sizzling. Now remember that this is a battery, so there is potential for danger there. And also, whenever you're using this to it's more or less electrolysis, so you are getting some hydrogen burn off, if I remember chemistry right. So make sure that you keep your face way back from this, and also make sure you wear the proper protection so you don't get messed up in any ways as far as breathing if you need it, well-ventilated area, safety glasses, all those things you need to have. Okay, I've done this for quite a while now. It's kind of changed colors, but I can't tell if there's any depth to it. I don't think that there is. But I'm going to try to pull this off of there, see what happens, see if it's a fail or not. Okay, so I can see my mark. There is no depth. It's like uh, it's fading as we speak. It's like just kind of rusted it. It's not very dark, but it didn't really eat through the metal any. It just kind of made a dark spot right there. It's very faint. You can barely see it on there. It's 
after I wiped it down really good with a rag. Now, if I took a Scotch Brite or something went through that, you'd never see that thing again. Now, I personally call that a failure. And you can see the mark in there, but it's not as dark as I want. It's not as defined. I think it looks cool, but I, I wish it was a lot darker. I think the main issue is it needs more voltage and it needs more amps because this little battery here is just not enough to do it. I mean, I, I about ran that thing dead. I probably spent 10 minutes. I know you guys only seen a short little clip, but I spent quite a bit of time on that. So I think that if I could, I think you can do it at home. But like I said, it needs a little bit more voltage, a little bit more amps. Now, if you're wondering what this is, this is a, a friend of mine sent me a picture of a marking knife used for woodworking. He said it's basically chisel sharp, comes to a very sharp point. Use this basically instead of a pencil to mark your board. And I did this out of an old file. So it has a little bit of texture up here so you can kind of grip it where the file used to be. It was a very dull file. I drilled a hole back here and most of this was all grinding work. I filed the bevels in and filed this these little notches in here. And this was just a fun little project to do, but it wasn't worth filming. It's just basically me standing in a grinder. But I did want to try the etching, try to get my mark in there. But I think he will like it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's project. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next week.